needs a breakthrough in their life? I do. Who needs a healing? Who's believing for a healing from God? What about an answer? Is there only, you're praying for something, you just need an answer from heaven or maybe clarity. Can I, just, can I just help you today how to position yourself in the flow of what God wants to do for your life? I just wanna just help you thinking and your posture because I believe God is speaking. God is moving, God is healing, God is restoring, God is bringing clarity. But we've got to position ourselves to have what God has for us, amen? If you need those things, let me just quickly, just a couple things. I believe position matters. When you learn, you know, my my boys are learning basketball. When I was younger, I learned basketball, cricket. When you play sport, you can want the ball, but if you're not in the right position, you're not gonna get the ball. It's all about how you position yourself, how you posture yourself, where your eyes are, where your hands are, is, are, where your body is. I actually believe when it comes to the things of God, you've got to position yourself too. I believe people often miss out on the miracles of God because they're not in the position to receive from God. The Canaanite woman only got a miracle because she postured herself at the feet of Jesus and refused to leave until she got a miracle. The woman with the issue of blood was in a crowd of spectators that day. It says they mobbed around Jesus. They came to spectate. She came with an expectation. So she reached out and touched Jesus because of her position. The man that was lame that couldn't get to Jesus only got his miracle because his friends were said, you're not getting a miracle if you stay here. We have to position you at the feet of Jesus. They were willing to lift off the roof of that place, lower him down to the feet of Jesus. And it says, because of their faith, he got his miracle. I believe. Sometimes we're hoping that God would chase us down. When we serve a God that left heaven, humbled Himself, took the position of a bond servant, gave His life for us, and now says, would you position yourself to be able to receive? Can I say your posture matters? Your heart posture matters? You're literally, whether you're in the house of God, whether you're at the altar when it's open, whether your hands are lifted up, whether your heart's expectant, I believe your posture and your position affects where you receive the clarity, the answer, the miracle from heaven. I can't determine God's timing, but I can determine my posture. And I need to find myself at the feet of Jesus. I need to find myself in the house of God. I need to find myself on my knees. I need to find myself at His feet if I want to get a miracle. Amen. So your position matters. The next thing that matters when you want to get clarity or an answer from God is you have to empty yourself. Your posture matters, but you also have to come in empty. Sometimes we're in the right posture, but we're so full. We're so full of disappointment. We're so full of frustration. We're so full of distraction. And we can be in the room today, but not in the posture and not in an empty position ready to receive. He called us to be vessels and He can only fill up what has been emptied, which is why Jesus said, come to me those who are thirsty, hungry, people that are needing, people that are hungry, people that are desperate. Have you got a desperate posture today? Have you got an empty posture today? Have you got a hungry posture today? This is why the Bible says things like letting go, says casting off or casting our cares, throwing off, forgetting the former things, do not dwell on the past. Behold, I do a new thing. I believe God is leading His church and His people into a new season of supernatural outpouring. I believe there's a fresh rain from heaven. I I believe there are miracles available. Come on, some of you just staring at me like today. What are you talking about? Sometimes you got to get a posture and a hungry that says, God, I want it. I know my kids, when they're hungry, they just keep going back to the cupboard. God, Dad, can I have more? Dad, can I have more? Dad, can I have more? Some of us need to get a hungry posture again that says, come on, God, I need more. I'm desperate for more of you. I'm not leaving here until you bless me. If you need clarity today, if you need an answer today, if you need a breakthrough today, if you need a miracle, I believe where you posture yourself. Tonight, if you need a healing, posture yourself here. Get to the altar. Come empty, but then yield. Third thing you wanna do, if you wanna receive from God, you gotta yield. Catherine Kuhlman, one of the great revivalists, miracle working evangelists, 
woman of the Holy Spirit said, God's not looking for golden vessels or silver vessels. He's looking for yielded vessels. What does yield mean? Yield means to give way. Yield means to give yourself to. Jesus said, He is the vine and we are the branches. If we want fruit, He goes, says in, in, says in John 15, you have fruit, more fruit, much fruit and lasting fruit. We don't have to do anything to get the fruit, but remain, wait, abide. And it's in your empty posture of remaining, abiding and waiting, there is life that flows from the vine into the branches. See, today, if you need a miracle, if you want touch of the, you want to be filled, baptised with the Holy Spirit, if you need a breakthrough, if you're looking for clarity, if you need strength, if you need power, can I say it's not about your effort, it's not about your energy, it's actually about your yielding. Just like a bird yields to the wind or a fish yields to the current, we actually are called to yield to God. So what are we actually yielding to? I'm not gonna preach for long today. I just wanna just make room because I just feel like God's wanting to pour into you afresh. But sometimes we're just not yielding. We're not positioned. We're not empty. So if we're gonna be positioned and empty to yield, what do we have to yield to? What's the river of God? You see, for us, and you might be here today and you may not know much about the Bible or church or God, that's cool. You're the best person here because you just got an open heart, nothing, just ready to receive. It's so hard to understand a God that we've never seen. It's so hard to picture a God I've never pictured before. It's so hard to comprehend His bigness and His majesty and His wonder and His grace and His power and His authority. So all through the Scripture, they, the writers of the Scripture led by the Holy Spirit use natural things that God created to describe a supernatural God. And one of those pictures is a picture of a river. And when it talks about God and talks about the Holy Spirit, often the river is used. A river is used because a river is a place of crossing over. A river is a source of life. A river is a source of power. A, a, a live, river is a source of of, of, of newness. And in Ezekiel chapter 47, it talks about the river and it talks about a temple. It talks about a picture of an altar, a place of sacrifice, a throne room. This of course is now representing you and me in the New Testament, that we are this temple, that Jesus came and He now allows the river of the Holy Spirit to come into us. And it says here, from this temple flowed a river. And it says from this altar flowed a river and, and it says that as they looked at the river, He measured out and it was ankle deep and then measured a little bit further and then it was knee deep and then measured a little bit further and the river was waist deep and then eventually the river was too deep to stand in. All that He could do was swim. You see, I believe that the river of the Holy Spirit, the flow of the Holy Spirit is not a right, it is a gift and therefore you have an invitation to step into to the things of the Holy Spirit. But if you need the clarity, the breakthrough, the answer, and therefore the baptism, the saturation, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you get to decide whether you're going to be ankle deep, knee deep, waist deep, or fully submerged in the anointing of the very person that changes you. Some of us want His miracles, but we don't want to be submerged. Some of us want Him to touch us, but we don't want to be saturated. Some of us want us to be healed, to have breakthrough, to have answers, but we're not willing to go all the way in. Who's a person that when you go to the, the beach or a pool, you're just like an ankle dipper for a while? Shans and I are so different as you've worked out. I'm a jump in guy. She's a bit by bit by bit. Because hey, all of us are gonna be different to our level of trust, experience, understanding of what it is to go into the depths of the Holy Spirit. But either way, whether it be you just jump straight in or ankle, knee, waist, all, can I just say there's an invitation to come into the river of the Holy Spirit. It goes on in Ezekiel 47, it says that wherever this water flowed, there was life. In fact, it said where the water was salty, it became fresh. Have you felt a bit salty lately? There's a freshness that's found in the river. It talks about there was these trees on the embankments and it says where the river flowed, it said that the trees had fruit in every season. 
and that in their leaves was healing. Come on, do you want fruit in your life? Do you want freshness in your life? Do you want healing in your life? It's found in the river of God. It's found in the river of the Holy Spirit, in the person of the Holy Spirit. So then Jesus refers to this in John chapter 7, verse 37. And it says there, at the, at the climax of the festival, or we might say, as we got to the 100 year anniversary, it says Jesus stood and shouted at the crowds. He said, anyone who is thirsty, anyone who's postured and empty, anyone that is thirsty may come to me. And anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the Scriptures declare rivers of living water will flow from His heart. And it goes on, of course, to say when He said living water, He was speaking of the Spirit who'd be given to anyone. Everyone say everyone. It's everyone believing in Him. The river, the freshness, the life, the healing, the, the, the anointing, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is available to anyone that would believe. Of course, saying this is the Holy Spirit that was poured out after Jesus went into glory. Can I say, the river, the flow is what we need to yield to. Some of us are working so hard for a miracle. Some of us are working so hard to try work it out on our own. Some of us are so frustrated why God's allowed us to go through it again. It's normal. Some of us have been waiting for answers and clarity of what comes next. And surely if God, You speak, I can do more for You. Surely God, if You heal, I can be a testimony for You. Surely if You move now, it's better for You and me and everyone. But we're never told to work it out, never told to have the answer. We were told to yield. We're told to be connected to the flow, to be empowered by the person of the Holy Spirit, who is our helper, our friend, our guide, our defender, our authority, our revelation and our power. A few years ago, after I finished university, a few, by few I mean like 19 years ago when I finished university. You're good, mate. If we, actually hang, I'm not gonna preach long. We just, I changed my mind. <laughs> my mates and I went, let's go have a boys trip. So we went out to Port Douglas and Cairns and we went bungee jumping, played some golf, went four-wheel quad biking, did cane toad racing, some island hopping, and then we went white water rafting. And when I went on the white water rafting with my mate Matt that's here today somewhere, we got in this boat and they said, empty out everything out of your pockets. You gotta get light. You don't need to carry anything with you. So we gave all our stuff away and they took it down to the end of the river. And we jumped in this boat and can I tell you, I didn't have to create a current, it was already there. I tell you what we didn't do, we didn't paddle upstream in the opposite direction to to where the current was going. The instructor said, get in the boat, grab a paddle and do everything that I say. The moment they let go of the boat, the flow of the river took us. Now we had to listen because there was a moment where he was like, paddle left, paddle right, lean back. Lean in, hold on. (laughs) And wherever the river flowed, we just went with it. I tell you, the river of the Holy Spirit does not need you to create energy, to create life. He does not need you to work, but He needs you to be able to trust and yield. Everyone say yield to the flow of the river. Three things we do and then we're just gonna worship. Sometimes we work against God. Sometimes we work for God. But I'll show you today, we're just meant to work with God. You might be here and you might say, well, I would never work against God. I'm team Jesus, signed up, names in the book. I'm all in. Well, the Bible says that, you know, we've got this thing called flesh. And all of us have it. Even if you're saved, you have flesh. The Bible says that, The mind is governed by the flesh, which is hostile to God, it says in Romans. Our flesh operates against our spirit. We have a part of us that fights against the Spirit of God. You've got to know that. 
Every one of us have something that's in competition with the Spirit. Your flesh, your natural way of thinking, your natural emotions and feelings will lead you to a place of competing with the Spirit. What is my flesh? My flesh is my independence. It's the part of me that wants to do things my way for my sake, because surely how I feel is better. And surely if I know it's better, but let me tell you, the flesh thinks it knows better, but the flesh has to die daily. The flesh is selfish. The flesh is complacent. The flesh is focused on me. The flesh gets discouraged. The flesh gets tired. The flesh gets disappointed. The flesh gets frustrated because at some point we're all like, God, shouldn't it be better by now? Shouldn't I have more breakthrough by now? And our flesh will wanna pull where my flesh will pull. My flesh is any action or achievement without dependence on the Holy Spirit. I wanna ask you today, are you dependent on the Holy Spirit? Spirit? Or do we just sometimes go to the Holy Spirit? If I'm honest, I don't live dependent enough on the Holy Spirit. And you might say, Josh, oh, you should be better, Pastor. I say, I'm human. I've got flesh. So I've got to make a constant daily decision that I need to be in the flow of the river of the Holy Spirit. Because if I'm not, my flesh will try to take me upstream. Galatians said it this way. It says in chapter five, so I say, walk by the Spirit. This is the, this is the secret. You've got to walk by the Spirit. If not, you gratify the desires of the flesh. He then goes on in verse 18, says, but if you are led by the Spirit, led, not just following, but led, there's a daily power. There's a daily anointing. There's a daily authority. There's a daily relationship with the Holy Spirit that every one of us need. And you might be here like I am saying, I will never ever be against God. But I wanna say your flesh is, and my flesh is. So I have to choose every single day to position myself, empty myself and yield to the flow of the Spirit because while my spirit is willing, my flesh is weak and my flesh will win unless I choose to yield. Are you doing okay? Second thing, you might say, well, I don't, I'm not against God, but maybe you're here and you're working for God. Because say, you were never meant to work for God. Have you ever seen someone do charades? And they've got all the motions. I'll give you one for an example. Of course I am mowing the lawn. Now I'm going through the motions, but there's no power to what I'm doing because I might look like I'm mowing the lawn, but the reality is we all know I'm not mowing the lawn. This is like someone that is trying to work for God, but without the anointing and the flow of the Holy Spirit. Can I say there's a lot of people, including myself at times, that will do devotions for God and we will do things for God and we will come to church for God and we'll try and be an example for God because if I can do it for God, I can help Him out. If I can do it for God, He'll be satisfied in me. But I want to tell you today, He is already satisfied with you. He is already pleased with you. There is nothing you need to do for God. Can I say, God does not need me to be on this stage preaching. God does not need me to be a pastor for Him. He does not need you to be a Christian for Him. He does not need you to be a witness for Him. He is inviting you to work with Him. He needs me to speak with Him. He needs our worship team to lead with Him. He's not asking you to do things for Him. It would be futile if when we got on that river, that rapid river up in Port Douglas or Cairns and we started to try and paddle against the current. We wouldn't get anywhere, but that's what we're trying to do with our flesh. But it would also be futile to get out there and think my splashing is what created the current. No, my splashing doesn't do anything because the current was already created. Can I tell you, there is a flow from heaven and His Name is the Holy Spirit and there is an anointing and an authority authority to get you to your destiny, but it takes you yielding, positioning and empty to say, God, whatever I'm walking through, whatever you've asked me to do, it's not by might, it's not by power, it's not by good intention, it's not by good action, it's not by good devotion, it's not by good attendance, but it's by your Spirit. 
Spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And I believe God's looking for a church and a people that would just be willing to yield to what the Holy Spirit is doing. That as I open the Word, it's not for Him, it's with Him. Holy Spirit, what would you say today? That as I pray to Him, it's not just to Him or for Him, it's with Him. It's Holy Spirit, speak through me today. It's as I worship Him. I'm not just worshipping for Him. I'm worshipping with all of the heaven, all of angels, all of creation. As I declare, He is worthy. I believe as you, go, as you try to do your best as a mum and dad, you're not just trying to do it for Him. He wants to do it with you. As you're trying to be a witness in your school or university, it's not for Him. He wants to do it with you. As you're battling and doing things through life, as you're trying to lead your business, you don't have to do it for God. You don't have to do it for your family. You can do it with God. And as you do it with God, there'll be a blessing on your family. There's a river, there's an anointing, there's a flow. How often do we try and give a blessing or a wisdom or help others, but it's not flowing because we're not in the flow? How often do we try and achieve and build and grow, but we haven't waited? Matthew 16, Jesus says to the disciples, takes up to Caesarea Philippi and He says to the disciples, hey, on this rock, I'll build my church. What did He say? I will build my church. Well, it says six days later in chapter 17, six days later, how many days later? Six, six is the number of man or the number of flesh. Six days later, it says He took them up a mountain, says to be alone with them. No jobs, no requirements, no tasks to be alone with them. And up there is Moses, up there is Elijah, up there is Jesus transfigured in all His glory. And what does Peter say to Jesus? Jesus, lucky for you that I'm here. I'm gonna build you a shelter. When you look in the language, that shelter means tabernacle or churches. He actually says, I'll build you three. I'll do campuses. How good am I? I'll build it for you. And it says the glory of God comes and interrupts Peter mid-conversation. And the Father says, this is my Son in whom I'm pleased. Listen to Him. Jesus never asked us to build anything. He asked us to work with Him, to listen to Him, to be in the flow with Him. It is the anointing of the Holy Spirit that we need. So therefore, what faith does is faith just positions us in a place where I can flow with what He's doing. Don't work against God, don't listen to your flesh. You don't have to work for God, you have nothing to prove to get His pleasure or satisfaction, He is already pleased with you. But instead He's calling us to be part of a flow to be part of an anointing, to be part of a grace. And this is where we yield, where we fight our flesh. We get tired of fighting for a breakthrough that we begin to just go with the river of God. You see, Jesus did no miracles until He came, became anointed with the Holy Spirit. But you see the disciples, the disciples, they kept trying to do things for Jesus. Some of them tried to fight against Jesus. Some of them try to do things for Jesus and they are constantly frustrated. They are constantly falling short. He is saying things to them like, how long should I put up with you? He's asking them to do tasks they can't seem to overcome. I mean, I know what that feels like, but it says here in Mark, Mark chapter 16 and understand this takes place after the anointing of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2. It says then, everyone say then, then the disciples went out and preached everywhere and the Word Lord was with them and confirmed His Word and by the signs that accompanied them. Can I tell you, the only way the disciples went from misfits that were failing, getting it wrong and working against the grain to be in people that were able to preach the Gospel, see signs, wonders, new life, fruit and healing through their life was the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It was the fulfilment of Ezekiel 47 where 
there was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit and out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water. That life was received wherever it went. That what was salty became fresh. That what was barren bared fruit and there was healing in their hands. I believe that God's called us to be a church of revival, signs, wonders and miracles, but it doesn't happen by listening to the flesh. It doesn't happen by our own comfortability. It doesn't happen by striving by our own effort. The only way it happens is through the person, the river, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It's what you need in your business. Team can come. It's what you need in your home. It's what you need in your family. When I, can I say, when I, when I hear from God, I don't often hear a big booming, interrupting voice. Personally, it's like there's this ongoing flow of conversation. I can tell you when it's quiet is when I've gotten out of the flow. I actually don't think God stops this flow of conversation. It's just I unposition myself sometimes and I listen to my flesh or I get too busy or distracted or I'm working too hard to build Him a church. But the moment I just start resting and reading and waiting and being still and worshipping, the flow comes back. There's times I'm meeting people significant positions and I've got my agenda and I've got my thoughts. But you know what I'm meeting? Going through my day, I'm catching up with someone, I'm doing some pastoral care and and I've got thoughts, but there's a moment in every catch up where if I've prayed, I've waited, I've rested, where I can feel the flow, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And it's at that point I drop my agendas and I drop my plans and I trust His grace. Can I say, you need that grace in your workplace. You need that grace in your marriage. You need that anointing in your conversations. You need that anointing in your workplace, You in your school. you You don't have to try and work for God to use you. He wants you to be part of His plan. You don't have to try and prove yourself to Him. There's a river, there's a flow, there's an anointing and He's asking you to empty yourself, posture yourself and yield yourself to the river of God. Come on, stand to your feet. I I look at the disciples and it feels like in Acts after they received the anointing, they didn't have to work for, for miracles. There's someone that needs one and they say, well, silver and gold we don't have. What do they say? We don't have much to give, but what we do have, we'll give. In the same flow that we saw, in the same flow that we received, in the same flow we pour out, in the Name of Jesus, rise up and walk. So if we know we don't have to work against, but there's a flesh that will. And if you know you don't have to prove anything, by working for, how do you work with? Well, you posture yourself, position yourself, you empty yourself out and you yield. But it's the yielding where most of us really struggle. Because I actually believe we often aren't very good at receiving. See, it's actually not about my paddling. That's my faith that maybe positions me but it's actually allowing the current to do what the current would do. It's receiving an anointing afresh every day from the Holy Spirit. Have you ever tried to pay for someone's dinner and they're no good at receiving, so they're chasing you down with 50 bucks trying to put it in your bag or down your top or whatever. And he's like, just just receive. Some of you have never done that and it's time, okay? Not to give the money back to bless someone. Some people are no good at receiving. Some of us are no good at receiving a compliment. I say, I think it's the same with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes the Holy Spirit just wants to pour out and we're thinking, wants to pour out and we're reminding, wants to pour out and we're working, wants to pour out and we're striving. And you're like, oh, I wanna receive, but God, I'll just, I'll just do a little bit more, then I'll be ready. Oh, you know what, God, I wanna receive, but this week I'm gonna do a little more devotions and then, and then I'll receive. God, I wanna receive, but I know I've messed up this week. So God, would you know, just, just receive. Matthew 10 verse eight, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those that have leprosy, drive out demons, freely as you have received, freely give. The only way to pour out is first you've gotta receive. John 10, and when He had said this, He breathed on them and He said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Acts 1 verse eight, but you will 
receive power. Acts 8, 17, and they began laying hands on them and they were receiving the Holy Spirit. See, if you wanna have fruit, if you wanna have life, if you wanna have clarity, if you wanna have healing, you need to remember that He is the vine and we are the branches. And there is not life that flows from the branches to the vine, but it is life and it is, it is fruit and it is, it is power that flows from the vine to the branches. It's from Jesus to us. You understand that He is the river. Now, I'm not the river, He is the river, but the river is given and flown and in, poured into me. But as then as it's poured into me, it can bubble out of me and begin to change my world. It is not about your work. It is not about your deserving. It is not about what you can and do to earn it. You've got to know your flesh will pull against it. But you won't not want to lift your hands. You won't want to fall to your knees. You won't want to just wait. Our flesh would rather work. Can I say, if Satan can't get you to work against God, he'll try and make you work for God. But you were never meant to work for God. You were meant to work with God. It's not about proving that you are worthy. It is just being willing to receive and say, Holy Spirit, I empty out my worldly thinking. I empty out my dis- Appointment. I empty out my desire. I empty out my past. I empty out my assumptions. And I just position myself to have a fresh flow of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. There are things that come to distract. There are things you are really facing. I don't deny it. But it's here you get in a posture where you just yield, where you just rest, where you just learn to receive. Because I believe God is wanting a church that can go into the deeper things. He's wanting a follower, a believer, a Christian, a son and a daughter that can go into the deeper things. Have you been outside the river? It's time to get in. If you've been ankle deep, it's time to go deeper. If you've been knee deep, it's time to go deeper. If you've been waist deep, it's time to go deeper. I would say there's some of us, it's time to get back into fasting, not for works, just to get back to dependence. For some of us, it's time to stop praying lengthy prayers and just stand in the presence of God. God and be still and know that He is God. For some of us, it's time to find your rest again. It's resting in, receiving from and running for. You've been running for so long. You've stopped resting and receiving. Come on right here across this place. Lift your hands, every one of us, to the God of heaven. Hello, thank you so much for watching this video today. I pray this sermon has blessed you, encouraged you and inspired you. You know, we may never have met, I may not know you, but God knows you. And I'll tell you today, God loves you. That even before you knew about Him, He loved you. And He has a plan and a purpose for your life. You know, so many of us do life on our own, trying to lead our life in a way that finds answers and finds the peace and finds the joy we're looking for, but we come up short. But God knew that you needed rescuing, that you needed saving, that you needed His love. So He sent His Son Jesus to come and pay the price for our mistakes. He lived a perfect life, but knowing we couldn't, He said, I will take their place. So He died and rose again so that His death could pay the penalty for my mistakes and my past and His life could make a way so that I could have life. I believe that when you believe in what Jesus did and when you invite Him to be Lord of your life, you can experience forgiveness, peace, hope, joy, purpose and life like you've never known before. It's not about what we've done or who we're not. It's about that we have a God who's good, who can turn things for good and loves you. He's a father, he's a friend, and you can invite him into your life today by simply saying this prayer after me. I'm gonna say this prayer and wherever you are, wherever you're watching around the world, pray this prayer with me. Maybe you once knew God and you walked away. You know what, maybe he's getting your attention today to say, come back into relationship with me. Maybe you've known religion, but never a real genuine relationship with God. Why don't you say this prayer too? And I believe this can be the beginning of a great new day. Let's pray. Dear God, Thank you for loving me and giving your life for me. I pray you forgive me for my past and you walk with me into my tomorrow. Let me know your grace, your forgiveness, your peace, your purpose, your joy and your hope into my life. I ask you to lead me and guide me from this day forward. Be Lord of who I am in Jesus' name. Amen. 
I'm so glad you prayed that prayer today. I believe that as you did, the peace, the grace, and the love of God comes into your life. You know what? The past is real, but it doesn't have to dictate your future. Let the love, the grace, and the Word of God go with you from this day forward. And I believe the best days are ahead for you. If you prayed this prayer or you want to know more, maybe you're on the journey. Why don't you flick us an email so we can send you some material about following Jesus. We can maybe connect you with a local church near you that you can do life with, get good people around you, and we would love to pray with you. I'm so glad you prayed that prayer. I'm so glad you're on the journey of following Jesus. I'm so glad you listened today. God bless.